lens and able to make a, a big impact to humanity and build that lasting relationship. And this for me, I think the mentors get more out of mentoring than the mentee in a way. Uh, so, and you might be wondering to yourself, I'm just about to graduate as a cadet. How can I be a mentor to achieve this? I tell you what, you have your peers and your peers sitting right there with you could be a, a, a mentor as well, or you can be a mentee to your peers. So uh, when I was at the academy, I, I, I do remember there were some cadets that we called uh, PACA cadets. I don't know if you still use that word today. Uh, so this cadet is very PACA. And what that meant is that cadet was uh, squared away. They could get things done very well. I still remember the name of the people we had back then. Uh, one of them, I, uh, uh, his name is Ibrahim Lama. I still remember him very well. And he did very well for himself. Uh, graduated, went on to work with LNNG. And, and I think uh, he ended up his career with LNG as a captain. And then also uh, Captain Jeremy yesterday. I have never met him before, but yesterday was the first day I actually saw him on screen. But when I was a cadet, like yourself, my elder brother, who was a cadet before me, used to talk about Jerome. And Jerome was kind of that guy that people talked about, uh, and he, would, he was doing great things as a cadet, and then when he went aboard, and he did so much. So I wasn't really surprised yesterday when he was heading uh, N NPA. And, and so I, I'm going to ask your class, I understand you're about 200 or so cadets graduating today. Who is that PACA cadets around you? I'm asking the question. So, so I, I think of someone, if someone can just uh, yell out that PACA cadets, who is that PACA cadet that you have? Oh, they can't hear me? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I, Oh, if that's fine. We can proceed if, if uh, they, they can't uh, say it out. But what I wanted to say is, when you get to that point where you're about to make some decisions, and maybe, for example, you don't have your mentor in front of you, you can always do something and say, what would this cadet do? Or what would this person do? For example, I would say, what would Jerome do in this situation? So in a way, you're incorporating uh, a mentor, a mentee into your thinking. And this has to go more into someone that you kind of know or you have learned about them, you studied them. And that takes me to the next slide, which is how do you seek mentors? This is important. You know, you don't just go out to a random person and say, can you be my mentor? Just like what Simon Sinek said. Uh, you have to seek a mentor wisely. And what are their values? What do they stand for? What do you stand for? What do you want to get out, out of this? Uh, it should not be based on, oh, this person can give me a lot of money. That's a big mistake. Uh, I know Connie said this when you go to some functions, don't go and say, I want you to give me a job. That's another big mistake. You're not, this is meant to be a relationship. You don't start out saying, I need money from you. No, that's not good. You got to focus on being a desirable mentee. Are you somebody that someone else would be proud to work with or would be interested to, to get you to become part of their network? Uh, you know, study the individual and make contact. Uh, let the conversation flow naturally. Don't impose. Don't um, try to make demands when you get to speak with this person. Build on the initial contact. Be patient. Know that it is a relationship of trust. I'll give you a very short um, example of my, I mean, many years ago when I, I uh, you know, started working for the U.S. Coast Guard, this, this was over 15 years ago. And one of the people that I was doing my job as a, some a non-rate, which is basically less than a petty officer, you, you're, you're kind of the lowest ranking person. So I was there working, 
uh, doing duties at the gates, basically as a, you know, sentry duty, you know, getting people in and out of the the unit, the, the base. So I did my job the way I was taught how to do it. I searched everyone that came in, I checked their IDs before I let them in. So it so happened that the number two person on that base was in a vehicle that had about 15 passengers and I checked for all their IDs, not even knowing that he was inside. And so they, they went in. Afterwards, my chief uh, called me and said that the number two person on the base wants to see you. And this, this is uh, somebody with the rank of uh, a Lieutenant Cornell. So normally, you don't go to see them, except you're in trouble. So I was scared. So what did I, what did I do now? So <laughs> So I, uh, I went over there and then I went to his office. He said to me, do you know why I called you? I said, no. He said, because you are the only one that I've noticed checks everyone's ID. And that is a direct order that I gave to everyone else to do, but others did not do it. So he said, I called you in to say thank you for doing your job. And since that moment he became a mentor not by me asking him he just took interest in what i did and i was there for about two years and he kept following up on my progress and even when i left that unit he followed my progress up to the point i became an officer and then he came for my commissioning as an officer so that's to show the commitment and and he was very high ranking he did not need me to progress in his career. So he just liked the fact that I did my job. And that could be the attraction that someone else has to be your mentor. And that takes me to the next one. How do you seek a mentor? So you got to reflect on the attraction that you have for that potential mentee. You know, how do you seek the mentee? So, so that attraction, you have to reflect on that because if it's for a selfish reason, you need to stop. It has to be for a selfless reason. Do you have the time to commit? Uh, give a listening ear when you meet this mentee. You know, you can be on your phone when you're talking to the mentee or busy doing other things. You have to make them feel valued. Make them feel like they're important to you as well. Uh, show genuine concern for their success and do not impose. You know, as a, as a mentor, you don't impose because you have the power. That's one thing I want to really touch on real quick. There is a power dynamics between the mentee and the mentor. Usually the mentor has more power and the mentee has uh, less power. So, so that power should not really play out when that relationship is happening. It should be very respectful. So you should use more of your reverence power, which is the power to influence, the power to to help people do their best without being forced to do it. And then you'll be an advocate for the mentee. And finally, provide real-time feedback. Now, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was career diversification. This one is big because right now you're graduating as a cadet to become an officer. And you might be a navigation uh, cadet, you might be uh, engineering, uh, transports, boat building, and other areas of maritime. I understand this class, you have about 10% uh, of your class, uh, you have females. This is an area where we're struggling in the maritime industry, having females uh, go aboard as, as deck uh, officers or as engineers. So for the 21 uh, cadets graduating in your class, I want to say a big congratulations. You have uh, gone into a field where I think you're highly desired, highly needed. And I would say do not be disappointed or frustrated that things might not move as fast as possible because unfortunately this is still a man's world in that area. You have more men and less women. So uh, career diversification will really help everyone, but especially uh, those that think that they want to achieve more. Uh, you it does require time and money to get new skills. It's very expensive. Uh, it helps you to stay with the innovation in your industry, 
And in the maritime industry, a lot of innovations, especially with technology, is happening. And challenging yourself to come out of your comfort zone. Because uh, we get into the habit, we're comfortable, we don't want to take any more risk. We're happy getting that uh, paycheck every month. That's all we care about, you know. But if you diversify your career, basically learning new things, uh, branching out, it pays off in the end. It opens up new career opportunities for you, keeps you relevant in your industry or even other industries, allows you to be flexible. And this one is big, attain your full potential. I think uh, Captain Jerome talked about it yesterday. And those opportunities that exist, there's so many of them. You know, he mentioned about the, the person that went into tanker or barge operations and they didn't even know much about this. They just happened to stumble into it. And today they're doing, they're doing great in that field. So, so looking out for those opportunities require you to be humble, require you to pay attention to details and, and be a, a learner or seeker of truth and knowledge. Uh, be employable and trainable. I tell you, there are many people that cannot be employed, even though they have all the qualifications, uh, because they're not just able to assimilate to other people. They're not able to get into the habit of, of um, being a team player. How do you be a team player if you're not able to listen to other people? And then maintain a long career in, in dynamic industry like the maritime. So this is what we covered. I know it's uh, trying to keep with time. I respect your time. I, I, that's why I tried to zoom through this real quick. It's a lot of stuff to cover, but uh, we talked about understanding your role as a mentor, as a mentee, how to seek mentor or mentee, build lasting relationship. What is career diversification? Why is it important to diversify your career? And I'll leave you with this. And this is something I picked up from, I'm a member of a leadership group. We call it a seven leadership group. I'm a fellow, actually. And I borrowed this from our core values that kind of we teach uh, other people. And it's called LITA. So L stands for love. I stands for integrity. And I say integrity because uh, you're going into a profession where your integrity is very important. Uh, if people do things that are unethical, things that are very outside what is prescribed. And yesterday you heard Captain Jerome talk about all the different instruments from IMO and the regulations, the council members, and the marine safety committees and all that stuff. Those are standards that you will uphold. But you know, your integrity speaks a lot about you. So you have to make sure that your integrity is very up to, to standard. And the other thing is truth. What is truth? Uh, truth is, is not just what you believe uh, based on your biases or things that you, are, you help maybe growing up. But you know, you've you got to let the truth be such that it is uh, able to accommodate uh, what is reasonable. And what is reasonable may be uncomfortable, but if it is a truth, you have to speak it. And, and then have the courage to speak the truth. I've been in many situations where it was easy to not speak the truth, um, but I found that with courage, I was able to do it. And then excellence. You know, we are all pursuing excellence. If somebody tells you, I am very excellent, I don't need to do anything more, run away from that person. Because excellence requires you to be humble, it requires you to keep learning. You're always pursuing to be a better version of yourself. And finally, all this goes down to relationships. You know, the relationships you have now at the academy, I tell you, 20 years from now, they, you will still have people that you talk with and share stories with. Uh, I think uh, Engineer Dubio talked about it yesterday when he brought one of the cadets that they were together, they learned together and all that. And even one of them ended up get, you know, getting married with him. They became husband and wife 
those are relationships that you cannot break over time. And I'll say nourish those relationships, uh, take them very dear to yourself, respect one another. And these are timeless and transcendent virtues. You cannot go wrong with this. So with that, we have come to the end of my presentation. Sorry, uh, technology is not the best, but I hope you took some of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Captain Akani Iene Iang. Thank you very much. We are, you pushed through despite the initial challenges with technology, and you delivered. Thank you very much, sir. And, and I will stand by for Q&A. Uh, I'll, I'll be waiting for the Q&A. OK, I understand that. Um, you might need to take questions right now. Um, I'm good to take questions if there are questions. Good morning, sir. My name is Mustafa Mukhtar from Marine Engineering ND2. My question is, uh, please, how did you start working for the United States Coast Guard? Uh, thanks for the question. I didn't get your name. What's your name again, please? Mustafa Mukhtar. Oh, Mr. Mukhtar, are you navigation or engineering or transport or boat building? Engin engineering, sir. Engineering, okay, thank you, Mr. Mokta. So I guess your question is, how did I uh, end up working for the U.S. Coast Guard? Yes, sir. Thanks for the question. Uh, so I think uh, it was Dr. O'Connor that uh, gave me the idea when uh, he was teaching me in class. So we were talking about uh, port state control and flag state control as part of our classes. So it registered in me back then that uh, the U.S. Coast Guard was uh, very respected around the world. I feel that's what we talked about. And then we talked about the Maritime Coastal Agency in the U.K. as, you know, one of the best as well. So in my head, I'm thinking, if only I could work with uh, an organization like this. And then, uh, you know, the more senior cadets that graduated before us, uh, when we met, they would say, man, when we were boarded by the U.S. Coast Guard, those folks don't joke around. They don't mess around. They're very experienced and very professional. So I was like, okay, uh, it's something I would love to do. So when the opportunity came, uh, when I migrated to the U.S., it, and I found out I could work for the Coast Guard, I did not hesitate. So I joined. And mind you, when I joined, I got the lowest ranking job. I started as a non rates Basically, I would say uh, I was lower than an, uh, a petty officer who is the, like an officer, but a petty. So a non rates basically does what an AD. You are doing the menial jobs, you're, you're doing the lowest things you can possibly do. So that's how I, I joined and, and I rose through the ranks. It's been over 15 years. And today I'm where I am because of hard work, uh, because of mentors, because of uh, the grace of God, because obviously you can't do everything by yourself. And so I would say, that was it. Uh, today, I, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's something that uh, I was passionate about. So I don't know if that answers your question.
So okay. I, I guess, uh, who is the Paka cadet? I was asking that question earlier. Is there a Paka cadet among you? If there are questions, let's know clearly, indicate, and um, do we still have any more questions? Ebon. Just hand in the mic, hand in the mic. You have the mic there, hand in the mic. You can talk from there. Morning, sir. My name is... Uh, Good morning. Ebo Ubon Gregory. I'm in the uh, Department of Nautical Science. Um, so we are... I don't have any question... But I want to appreciate your effort for finding time to talk to us, despite your busy schedules. Um, this lecture has given us a lot of insight concerning mentoring and uh, career diversification. We are grateful and we, we are going to put all this into practice. You've given us the importance of mentoring and uh, um, how we are going to get a good mentor and how we can be a good mentor to others. And then you've thrown an insight into career diversification so that after here, some of us that will not be so lucky to remain directly in our field, we can as well know what to do for ourselves thank you sir we are grateful and we want to implore you we want to beseech that whenever we call on you again you should as well attend to our complaints and and give us some weight as a mentor thank you sir thank, thank you. you mr gregory don't go yet uh, are you are you the parker cadet Yes, sir, I am, by the grace of God. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, you have a lot of responsibility moving on. So you, you, you have to be uh, that shining light for your class. And, and also uh, be humble about it. I think, I think it's an honor for them to give you that uh, name, a Paka Cadet. So congratulations. Thank you, sir. Any more questions before we wrap this up? All right. No more questions. Thank you, Lieutenant Commander Akan Ian. It was a blessing to have you speak to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on. Our next presenter will be speaking to us on emerging opportunities in maritime industry and business strategies. Samuel Olufemi Aweda. Femi Aweda is a maritime business management professional currently working as the fleet manager and designated person ashore for a leading ship management company in Nigeria. He graduated with an upper credit award in maritime transport and business management from the Maritime Academy of Nigeria, of Nigeria here in Oron, and has acquired several professional skill sets within the maritime industry and numerous. They include, but not 
are not limited to offshore vessel logistic services, vessel commercial and contract management, maritime statutory and regulatory standards and applications, vessel maintenance and repair systems, marine assets insurance and risk management, personnel and corporate performance management, and many more. Femi is a passionate young man who is determined in helping the younger generation gain insights into a purposeful career path. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Femi Ayoda with a rounding, resounding round of applause as he takes the podium. Please, we can do better than that. He has taken his time to come and speak to us, so encourage him as he makes his way to the podium. Thank you. Mr. Weather, you are welcome. You have the floor. Good morning, everyone. Um, permit me to move away from. These colors very brief in academy. <laughs> Do you understand what it means to be a brief person? While you're all assuming war phase, what's happening? <laughs> all right, standing on the existing protocol. Good morning once again to everyone. Um, it's a privilege and an opportunity to be here after much several years ago, seeing my wonderful lecturers and those that envy to be uh, like. Thank you so much for all what you've done for us. Uh, thank you for the Amano Management for organizing this wonderful session. So. Uh, I have just a very short time, and the presentation is, I'll go straight into our presentation. The topic, once again, is Imagine Opportunities in Maritime Industry and Business Strategy. Uh, the objective of this lecture is actually target, targeted at ensuring that the undergraduates would have clarity on preferred opportunities suitable for ease or career projection. Secondly, we hope that the undergraduates would gain capacity to make objective career choice. Thirdly, the undergraduates would understand necessary steps to be taken in building a sustaining vocation in the maritime industry or improve on a vocation towards successful pursuits. We believe that some of you have already gotten experiences during your IT period and some have actually worked before coming to the academy. Um, going back to the topic, Topic said, imagine opportunities in maritime industry and business strategy. Imagine opportunities. So what do you think to be an opportunity? A mentor of mine will always tell me that an opportunity is an event, just an everyday event that you come across. However, an opportunity becomes an opportunity when you are prepared for it. Do you understand? If you're not prepared, you cannot, it cannot be an opportunity to you. You have to be prepared, and for you to be prepared, you have to be qualified and same as being competent for that event. Then it becomes an opportunity. 
um, you always hear of um, kind of like publications, you always hear informations, receive information that is a vacancy for a particular position. But sometimes you read through and you notice that you are not qualified for that position. That is not an opportunity to you. Is that not so? Am I communicating? But when you are prepared, it becomes an opportunity for you. So imagine opportunities. Opportunities will always come. But if you're not prepared, it would not be them to be an opportunity. The marriage